Good evening. So today we are going to start with the analysis of an issue. So in my introductory class on the analytical writing, I have told you that there are two essays on the analytical writing. The first task is the issue. The second task is the argument. So we have already discussed the argument. So today we are going to start with the issue topic. So to write the issue topic, the computer gives you 30 minutes of time. You have approximately 150 topics online which are called as the pool of issue topics. On the day you write the test, the computer randomly selects one topic and shows it to you and you have to write your essay within that 30 minutes by typing it directly on the computer screen. Once you have written this essay, it goes to the ETS office where it is evaluated and graded on a score between 0 and 6 points. It's done on a 0.5 scale and therefore you can get anywhere from 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5 right up to 6 points. Once you have completed the issue task, you get the analysis of an argument task. Now one thing I want to tell you is every task comes with a timer. Each task you are given 30 minutes to do. Suppose you are completing your issue task in 25 minutes. You cannot take that extra 5 minutes and give it to your argument. The timer is 30 minutes. And the same way, suppose you write this essay and you want to take more time. By taking some time from the argument, you cannot do it. Every task is a timed one and you have to finish writing within the 30 minutes. One more thing I want to tell you very clearly is, if you do not complete your writing within time, and if you are still typing your essay and the 30th minute is on the computer screen, the computer will exit you from the topic. And you will be submitting an incomplete essay. Incomplete essays when you submit, you are going to get a penalty for it. You might get a penalty of one point on what you are likely to score. So you don't want to lose what you have already got for yourself. Therefore, my advice to you is always have one eye on the time because you cannot keep typing and forget about time you need to have a little bit of concentration on the time so that you don't run out that means planning and preparation beforehand becomes necessary how much can i write you know you can't bite more than you can chew that means you can't plan to write a thousand words and you can type only 500 words in the time that you have so you need to have an idea about how much you're capable of writing within the time given to us. So the thing is, when you say there is 30 minutes of time for every task, you don't get the 30 minutes to actually write your essay. Because the 30 minutes also includes your reading the topic, analyzing the topic, planning your topic, and then, and then writing your topic. So you see, in that 30 minutes, I would say that you need to have at least 5 to 7 minutes for the preparation stage. Reading, analyzing becomes very important. Once you have analyzed, then you plan what you are going to write. And then you start your writing. The reason why the test maker has already given you the topics online is for you to do the pre-preparation. Even before you go to write the GRE test, it is essential that you have at least one glance at all the topics that are likely to come and prepare on at least a few of them properly so that on the day you write the test, you don't have any kind of problem in how much you can write and how far you can go about. So this prior preparation becomes necessary. I would also like to tell you the very fact that these topics are there online, the expectations from you students become higher. You see, if I were to give you a topic now and ask you to write an essay and you compose and write an essay, I would be like, okay, I gave the task now and this student has done whatever he or she can, is capable of doing at this point of time. But suppose I give you a topic today and I tell you prepare on it and write it tomorrow, what will my expectations from you will be? It will be higher. I will expect better from you because I will think I gave the student time. What did he or she do? Similarly, the test maker has published those topics for you already. And the very fact that he has published the topics means the expectations from you become that much more. 
So prior preparation becomes necessary for you. Don't ever wake up to the reality of your analytical writing one day before the test. I'm warning you. You need to do this in a phased manner. Start by doing a few topics every time. Because many of these topics require a little bit of, little bit of discussion and knowledge. Now, when you take these issue topics, the test maker says, you don't need to have any kind of technical knowledge about these subjects. You don't need to be an engineer. You don't need to be a lawyer. You don't need to be a doctor. You don't need to be a teacher to be able to write about this because these are general topics. All of you students with this many years of education behind you should have some degree of understanding of these topics. But there are going to be complex issues. There are going to be there are going to be confusions about how to interpret those topics. That means discussing them beforehand with your teachers, with your mentors, with your fellow students, and gaining some kind of information makes sense. Because though the test maker says you don't need any technical knowledge or any kind of specific knowledge, let me be clear, you do need some degree of knowledge, general knowledge, in order to be able to write any kind of a convincing essay. What kind of examples I choose? How can I support my argument? You know, you need to have some degree of information about what's happening around you, what kind of, you know, experiences you've had. Use all these in your writing. So putting all those things beforehand and planning makes it easier for you to be well prepared and write confidently on the day of the essay, of the day test. Now, let us now look at the issue topic. Now, the first thing we have to do is we are told it's an analysis of an issue. Every topic that comes is going to make an issue for you. So first of all, what do we understand the word issue about? What does it mean? When do we say, I had an issue? When there is some kind of a conflict. An issue arises when there is a controversy. When there is an argument. When there is a difference of opinion. So all the topics that are here, the, the hundred and odd topics that are there here are all issues, each expressing an opinion that is controversial. Your idea of what it is, or your opinion of what it is, or your viewpoint of what it is, may not necessarily be mine. Therefore, when there is this kind of a conflict, it becomes an issue. Now these topics which are issues are taken from our everyday life. They could be taken from our academics. They can be taken from what's happening around us. Right? So these are general issues. Now each topic, when it comes, it gives you this is issue. And if this paragraph is the topic, the issue, there is one more top, you know, paragraph given below that, which is the direction. So when you get the topic on the computer screen, the first thing you do is you read the topic very carefully and you analyze it. Analyze here means you pinpoint the key words, interpret them, understand them. Try to get to know what this topic is trying to tell you. Once you have understood the topic, the second is you read the directions. Because it's very crucial the test maker keeps insisting on this. He says, write the essay on the basis of the instructions given. So every topic that you get don't have the same instruction. They are different type of prompts, different type of instructions. So we need to follow the instruction and write an essay by framing it according to what the test maker wants. So let's forget about the instructions first of all. Let's look at what the topics are supposed to be. Every topic will express an opinion or make a claim. Here, instead of evaluating that claim whether it's logical or not like you do in the argument here what do you do you are asked to express your opinion you see if the analysis of an argument is an objective writing objective means your personal opinions don't come you don't say i agree with it or i disagree with it there you say whether the argument's claim is sound or unsound, whether it's logical or illogical, where you are doing what is called as the job of a judge. And a jo judge remains impartial.